page 85 and 86 um, in your notebooks talking about uh, leadership. Um, so we're going to go to page 86 here and look at the qualities of a godly leader. Um, so first things to kind of go through is to understand that a leader is not necessarily somebody um, who is godly. Like ungodly people can lead and unlike uh, ungodly people can have characteristics of leadership that we talked about, identifiers of a leader um, that we talked about earlier. So uh, we have to distinguish the fact that like we as Christians want to be godly leaders. And so um, qualities that we would look for um, would first of all be humility, um, which remember we talked about this as one of the, the identifiers um, of biblical manhood. And that's not thinking of yourself more highly than you want to really have an understanding of where you um, fit. Also, um, somebody who fears the Lord. Now, this is a weird term that sometimes people don't understand. Um, it does not mean that you're afraid of God. What it means is that you have a proper respect um, for him and for uh, what he what he is. Um, that's not the same as like being afraid. It's just having a healthy respect. Um, a godly leader is going to have wisdom. They're going to know not only the word of God and from the word of God is going to come wisdom, but they're also just going to have an idea of like what to do in situations. Um, they're also going to have strength because as a leader, sometimes you have to make difficult decisions. And so that takes strength to do. Um, a godly leader is going to display the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, um, faithfulness and self-control, all of those things are going to be things that they um, display. Uh, and lastly, um, the same way that Jesus uh, washed the disciples' feet, a godly leader is going to be somebody who exhibits service in the way that they lead. They don't lead to be in charge. They don't lead to be lazy. They lead so that um, they can serve those who are around them. Now, there are identifiers of a fallen leader. So somebody who is not um, leading in a good way, um, there are a couple identifiers of, of that. So first of all, they're unable to work with other people. Um, when we talk about being unable to work with other people, like this is the kind of person who um, can't do a science project with other people well because like it's their way or the highway. They have no yield. They have no give. Um, and what they want to do. Uh, and so it's hard for them to be on um, on teams. It's hard for them to be um, on uh, any type of group project or group thing because they want everything for themselves. Um, that's not leadership. Leadership is knowing when to shine and when to back off. Um, they always have to win. Um, so like when somebody's not leading properly, like they always got to get the last word. They don't understand that the relationship between the two people is really the thing that's valuable. It's um, it's just like, I want to win at all costs. Um, or on the other side of the coin, they choose not to lead or they're just passive. Like um, they could lead. They have the capability or the skills. They have what they need. But because they don't want to stick their neck out, they don't tend to lead. Um, this is what Adam did in the garden. Um, he chose not to lead when Eve had the fruit because um, he was right there and could have said, no, put that down. Um, but instead, he just chose not to. Um, so a good biblical perspective of um, of a fallen leader is King Saul in 1 Samuel. So like from the get-go, King Saul looks like a leader. Like he's he's tall. He's the, he's the one that the people elect um, as the leader. Um, when they ask for a king, um, but then when it's time for him to like be crowned king, um, they find him hiding. Um, this is in First Samuel chapter ten, um, and he is kind of trying not to. He, he's he's scared of what's going to happen. But then when he um, is king in First Sam, First Samuel chapter seventeen, um, he's the one that chooses not to fight Goliath. He should have been the one to go out there, and yet. He allows David to go um, in his stead. And then lastly, after David wins a lot of fame, um, Saul spends the next portion of his life trying to kill David because he's jealous of him. Um, 
Saul was an intensely insecure person. Um, and insecurity does not allow you to lead um, properly. Uh, so you can see that leadership is one of those things that as, as a biblical man, um, you really want to aspire to work towards the first six and not those three. Um, so I want you to look over on page 85 for me. I want you to answer these two questions. Um, remember to restate the question, um, answer in complete sentences, give a good answer. Um, which of the following, which of the identifiers of a fallen leader is the worst quality? Like which one of those three do you think, man, like out of all of those, that's the worst? And then why? Um, and then number two, which of the identifiers of a fallen leader is the biggest struggle for you? Why? Is it always having to win? Um, is it um, being passive, just choosing not to lead? Is it being unable to work with other people? Like which one of those is the biggest struggle for you? Once you've completed that, just submit um, on Teams. Um, make sure that you hit submit and we'll see you.